Hi, my name is Jake and today I'll be showing you how to assemble our M12 field wireables. First we'll have our screw termination field wireable. This is our most common, it is intended for high vibration and more robust applications. Second we have our IDC field wireable. This one is intended for less rugged applications but used for quick installation. Third we have our latest field wireable, the push in and clamp. This is intended for quick installation with comparable robustness to our screw termination. And then lastly, we have our solder termination. Let's get started. For the screw termination field wireable, you'll need a wire stripper and a screwdriver. Here we have a four pin shielded field wireable. There are six parts to this field wireable. First, we have the threaded compression nut, the compression ring, the rubber cord grip, the shielding bell, the housing, and the connector. When you have the cable and the conductor stripped and ready to assemble, you'll want to slide on the parts starting with the threaded compression nut and working your way back to the connector. Once you get to the shielding bell, you'll want to slide back the foil and fold it over the shielding bell. Once you have the foiled shield wrapped around the shielding bell, you'll then want to assemble these parts up to the housing. Right, lastly, you'll want to connect these four conductors to the screw terminals. On the inside of the connector, you can see each pin is numbered to help you obtain the desired pinout. You will then insert the conductors into each terminal and tighten the screws. Once you have the screws fully tightened down, you'll then want to connect the connector to the housing. And once that is tight, you're ready to go. This is our IDC termination fill wireball. This connector has four parts. First, we have our metal threaded shell, a cord grip that has marks to help mate with the coated insert. Notice how the coated insert has a special keyway on the other end to mate with the connector only one way. And then lastly, we have our connector. The cable needs to be stripped back, but the conductors do not. When the cable assembly is complete, the internal blades will cut through the insulation of the conductors to make contact. First, you'll slide the metal threaded shell onto the cable, and then the cord grip, and then the coated insert. Make sure when installing the insert, you arrange these wires according to the numbers shown to obtain the desired pinout. Once you have the wires slid through, you may trim them down and then connect the connector using the mating keyways. Lastly, connect the cord grip and the metal threaded shell together with the connector. This will force the insert blades all the way into the insulation. Once it is tightened down to the cable, you're ready to go. This is our clamp and push in field wireable. This connector has three parts. First is the plastic back shell, the housing, and then the connector itself. Using a wire stripper, you'll want to repair the cable and conductors. When that is finished, you'll want to slide the back shell and the housing onto the cable. You can see on the connector that the terminals are both numbered and colored to help you obtain the correct pinout for your application. To use the clamp method, you will open each terminal and clamp them onto the conductors. Once they are secure, you'll then want to connect the housing to the connector and lastly, the back shell. Next, I will show you how to use the push-in method. You can use the push-in method using solid conductors or conductors with ferrules. Instead of opening up the clamps, you'll be able to just push in the conductors into each terminal. Then connect the housing and the back shell just like before.
Here we have our solder termination field wire bowl. This field wire bowl has five parts. First, the compression nut, the compression ring and the rubber cord grip, the housing, and the connector. You'll need a solder iron and a wire stripper to assemble this field wire bowl. When the cable and conductors are prepared, just like the screw terminal, you'll want to start with the compression nut by threading it onto the cable, and then work your way back to the connector. Then you'll want to solder each conductor to their corresponding solder cup. If you look closely, you will see each of the terminals are numbered to help you achieve the desired pinout. For each solder point, you'll want to thread the copper into the cup and add a little solder to hold it there. I recommend working from the inside out to make it easier for you. Once you've completed soldering your pins, you'll want to assemble the housing, cable grip, compression ring, and the compression nut together. And once you have that tightly secured, you're good to go. Thanks for watching and see you next time.